Hey everyone, this is Paul Royer, and today I'll be giving you a short tutorial on how to set up your first API in Java using Thriftly. Now I'm assuming you're already familiar with Thriftly and that you've already installed Thriftly Developer and activated your Thriftly license. If that's not the case, pause this video and head over to docs.thriftly.io and click on the developer section on the left hand side. Once you follow those first few steps and you have your license activated, come back here and we'll continue. Now the first thing you'll notice is that I have a brand new install of Eclipse set up. So we're going to be doing our project in Eclipse and the first thing we need to do is create a new Java project. So I can do that by coming over here to File, New, Java Project, and I'm going to call mine Thriftly How To. And that's it on this screen, so we can just hit finish. And there we go, we have a new project all set up. Now to use Thriftly, there's a few important libraries we need to import into our project. So we're going to do that before we do anything else. Now to do that, what we'll do is we'll come to our folder here that we just created and we'll right click and we'll go to Import. And we're going to want to choose under the general menu here, we're going to choose File System. We'll hit Next. And up here we'll hit Browse. When our browser comes up, we're going to navigate to this PC, our C drive, Program Files x86, and we're going to go to Thriftly Developer, and Bin. And once we have Bin selected, we're going to hit OK. Now in this Bin folder, there are three files that we need to import into our project. The first one is thriftly.java.dll. Uh, the next one is thriftly.java.jar and third thriftly.java.resources.dll. We're going to select all three of those and we don't want to put those in our root. We're going to create a folder called lib. So right here I just added lib. So it's going to create that folder. We'll hit finish and there we go. We now have a folder here called lib with our three files imported. So now we need to make sure that we're using those in our project. So one more time, we're going to right click here and we're going to go to build path and configure build path. And there's two things in here that we need to change. First on the source tab, we're going to drop this down right here for our thriftly how to slash source. And under the native library location, if you double click that, uh, it'll bring up this little window. We want to choose workspace because the folder we want is inside of our workspace. And we're going to choose that lib folder that we just imported and we'll hit OK and we'll hit OK again. So we're done on the source tab. Now we're going to come over to libraries and we're going to say add jars. And inside of our project, we're going to go to that lib folder and we're going to select the thriftly.java.jar and hit OK. And that should be everything we need now to use thriftly in our project. So we'll hit OK. And you'll notice here it added this referenced libraries and our thriftly.java.jar is in there now. So we're all good to go. So now we need to create our server. So let's create our main.java first. So we're going to right click on thriftly how to again and we're going to go to new and we're going to go to class. And we'll put this all under one package. We'll call it our thriftly how to package. And this is going to be our main class definition. So we'll just call it main and down here we're going to select our public static void main string arg. So it's going to include that for us. And we'll hit finish. And there's our file generated for us. Now in order to use Thriftly we need to import a couple of tools here. So let's make sure that Thriftly is working properly. So if I type import and I type Thriftly dot and there we go, autocomplete is working. That means we properly referenced our libraries. So we're going to say thriftly.java. Dot, and I'm going to hit control enter to give me some suggestions here. Now there's two things I need in my main file. I need thriftly server, and then we'll do it again. And I need Evo exception. Because if our server crashes for any reason, it's going to throw an Evo exception. So we want to make sure we catch that. So we'll do that now too. Over here, we're going to say throws evo exception. 
And that part's done. And now to actually create our server and set up one service on our server, we need a few lines of code. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that. And we'll go through this. So we create a new instance of a Thriftly server here. Then once we have that instance created, we add one service to it that we're gonna call string service. Now this isn't created yet, we're gonna create that in a minute, but we're gonna go ahead and set it up here in our main function. And uh, add service also takes another parameter here, it's an optional parameter uh, to give our service a name. So you can give it a custom name. If you don't pass this parameter, uh, this argument, what it does is it uses the class name as the service name in your API. And we'll see that later on. And it's important that you name every service um, because Thriftly supports multiple services under one endpoint. So each service has to have a unique name. It actually becomes part of the URL. So like I said, we'll see that later on when we actually run our API. Next, the last thing we need to do is start our server. So that's what you see right here, thriftly server.start server. So our main.java is actually done. Now before we run our server, we gotta create that, sting, that string service. So we're gonna come over here. We're going to go to new class again. And this one we're gonna call string service. And this one is not going to have a main function. So that's all we need to do here. We're going to say finish. And again, we need to import a couple of things. We're going to import published attribute, And we need to import thriftly.java.parameters name. And we'll see what these are used for in just a moment. So now we have our string service class, and this is where we're going to actually define our first API calls in our first service in our API. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste some code here, and we'll go through it together. So by defining a function in this string service class, it's actually defining an API call in our API. And so what I'm doing here is I'm defining an API call that we're gonna call join. It takes a string called string one and a string called string two, and it concatenates them. That's all it does. So I do a little error handling here as well. So string one, I make sure that it's not an empty string. If it is an empty string, I wanna throw this error. So by throwing an exception, Thriftly will catch that and it will actually handle that through our API and we'll see that in just a moment. So I do that for string one and for string two. If either one of them is an empty string, I throw an exception with a, a simple message. If I get past those two checks, then I combine the two strings with a space in the middle and we're done. Now, one thing you'll notice up here is we have some annotation. Uh, right here, this published attribute what that does is it lets Thriftly know that this is an API call and we want it to be published as a part of our API. If you don't include that, it'll just be another simple class function. Um, whether private or public, it doesn't matter. If you do not include that published attribute uh, annotation right there, it will not be published in the API. We also have to have this parameters name attribute right here. And then this names equals, this is where we name our individual arguments for our, uh, our call. If you don't include this, what happens is we don't have any way of detecting what these variables are called, and so they'll show up as arg0 and arg1. So it's necessary to put this here if you want to give your arguments for your API call specific names. And that's all we need. Um, we can actually go ahead and run this API right now and see what happens. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna hit run. Oh, no, we have to be on our main function. So let me come over here to main and we'll hit run. And you'll notice this Thriftly developer window comes up with a few options. So let's go through this. You have a couple transport options, framed or HTTP. Under this protocol dropdown, we have lots of options, Thrift binary, Thrift compact, JSON RPC, SOAP, and JSON REST. Now Thriftly actually supports all of these protocols at the same time and you can choose which protocol you want when you make the call by providing a header. Um, however, by selecting a specific protocol here, that's what's gonna show up in your documentation and your test interface. So it defaulted to JSON RPC, we'll just leave that there. 
you'll notice we have a port here. Now, if you wanna run this locally on your own machine or on an internal network, you can select a port and do some testing internally. Uh, and then you, we also have an encoding dropdown here. We have UTF-8 and ANSI. We're gonna leave the, all those defaulted. What we really wanna show off today, however, is our gateway. Our gateway is a feature that allows you to expose your API to the world. With zero configuration, we can get it out there using our gateway. So if you click on that, it's going to open up this little drop down here called Gateway Region. If you're running this off of our live server, you're going to see a number of regional servers here. You might see Texas, Brazil, Japan, and others. What those are, those are localized gateway proxy servers that we use to connect your API to your customers. And we do that all locally so that you can get the best possible performance. So you're going to want to choose the gateway that's nearest you. In my case, I'm using our staging server, so I'm not going to see those options. I'm just going to see one of our test servers here. So I'm going to select that and I'll hit start gateway or start thriftly. And there we go. We have an API published and live on the internet right now. And this first screen that pops up in our browser, it gives us some basic information about our endpoint and our services that belong to that endpoint, including the address that you would use to make API calls to this service. And we provide a little convenient copy button there so that you can copy and paste that and get it in the hands of your developers so they can start making API calls. So let's click on string service. And sure enough, here is the API call that we defined, join. So let's look at it. Yep, it takes string one and string two and it returns a string. And all of this documentation was automatically generated from that Java that we wrote in Eclipse. So let's test it. I'm gonna click Test API. And this is our test environment. Right now we only have one method to test and that's join. So let's try it out. Let's join two strings. And I'm going to send that call to my API and there you go the result let's join two strings with a space in the middle so just like that in about 20 to 30 lines of Java we have defined an API with an endpoint and one service with one call and it's up and running live on the internet that's the power of Thriftly so let's let's play with it a little bit more I'm going to come back over here to Eclipse and I'm going to stop my process and just to show you that that was running off of that process, if I come back over here and I refresh this, you'll notice that it's down now because I stopped that process. And I want to add, let's add one more um, API call. So we're going to add another function call in here. We're going to define another function. Again, we're, it, we're making sure to include our published attribute. And this time it's only going to have one parameter. Again, we're calling it string one. And this one is called two upper. So it takes one string, it checks to make sure that string is not empty, and then all it does is send back the uppercase version of that string. So I'm gonna save that, and let's run it again. So we'll come over here to main, we'll hit run. Our window comes up, it should save your settings from the previous time that we ran it. So we're just gonna hit start thriftly. And we're back to our documentation page here. Let's click on string service. And now we have two calls. We have our join call that we defined previously and the two upper call that we just added. So if we look there, yep, there it takes one string and it returns a string. So let's click test API. So from our method dropdown, we're actually gonna select two upper this time. And we're gonna say, please make me uppercase send that and there you go please make me uppercase so we just defined our first API in Java using Thriftly it's pretty exciting how easy it is to use and um, we're gonna be bringing out some additional videos in the future there's lots of features that we'd like to show you guys that I didn't show here but I wanted to provide something for you guys to get started uh, if you want a more thorough example you can uh, go to your if you have Thriftly developer installed go to your documents folder and look for the Thriftly developer folder in there and there is a project called Property Tracker. 
And the property tracker is a much more thorough example with multiple services, with database access, some validation, all that stuff. So play with that, check it out. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact any member of our team. And I really want you guys to get in and get your hands dirty and play with Thriftly and let us know what you think.